Hey everyone, welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today we're going to be talking about Fortinet. Q4 2023 quarterly earnings results. We left off Fortinet in 2023 with some unanswered questions. We didn't know exactly how things were going to go this year, but we were pleasantly surprised, I'll say. Yeah, the market apparently was pleasantly surprised too. Maybe we should just do a brief recap of what happened last year to set the stage for why it's exciting for what actually happened in this first quarter of 2024. Yeah, exactly. If you're just showing up because you see Fortinet stock hitting or reachieving all-time highs, here's what happened. So starting in Q3 2023, so last autumn, CEO Ken Z and the top team said billings were going to start coming in a bit light. About 1.56 to 1.7 billion was the outlook for the fourth quarter. That's down actually from 1.72 billion in billings in Q4 last year. And if you don't know what billings are, those are invoices sent to customers. It's often a good indication of future revenue over the especially the short to midterm. So let's say as much as two years in most cases. So when you're talking about a cybersecurity industry that is a secular growth trend, you have lots of companies growing in the double digit percentage range. Suddenly Fortinet, which is a leader in networking, hardware, and security, the convergence of those two things together. Suddenly when you're looking at a decline, that's not so good when the overall industry is in, in high growth mode. Of course, Fortinet, a bit of a different company because it is stilted towards hardware, which we know a lot of infrastructure spending is now in a cyclical downturn. It looks like this is going to be just a normal cyclical downturn, but still, that was the problem that cropped up last year. Fortinet last year really started to explain to investors that they are trying to incorporate not just the hardware, but shifting their focus into SASE, secure access, secure edge. Am I saying that right, Nick? Yeah, secure access service edge. And yes, SASE is how it is actually pronounced. Goofy acronym, but an important cybersecurity service. So SASE is currently dominated by another one of our favorites, cybersecurity companies, Palo Alto Networks, and also to a lesser extent, Zscaler. But before we shift into discussing SASE, let's talk about why Fortinet really helped out with cheering up investors in this quarter. Yeah, thank goodness. So Billings actually ended up being up in Q4 2023, not down like the guidance implied. So they actually grew Billings 8.5% to 1.86 billion. They signed a lot of new customer deals in the quarter, including for that new SASE service. Now they're not completely out of the woods yet for Q1 2024. We do get some seasonality here when you have typically a hot end to the year and then some maybe more diminished financial results typically in the first quarter of each year. So billings, you'll see a sequential down of 1.39 to 1.45 billion for the outlook. That is still slightly down from 1.5 billion reported in the first quarter of 2023. So the company not out of the woods yet. We'll talk about this a little bit more in just a moment. However, this does overall indicate the Fortinet can actually adapt with industry changes and its hardware-based cybersecurity business, including those proprietary application-specific integrated circuits, their SPUs, secure processing units, powering that hardware and that network security hardware very much can adapt with industry changes and keep up. So a solid close out to the year. Maybe we should talk about what the billings growth and guidance equated to as far as actual headline numbers. Q4 revenue was 1.42 billion, which is up 10% year over year. Gap operating profit margin of 27.2% compares to a gap operating margin of 27.9 in Q4 of 2022. Gap earnings per share, 40 cents, which 
is flat year over year, free cash flow of 165 million, down 67% year over year, which we're going to talk about that later. Fortinet repurchased $896 million in stock in Q4, which is 1.7% of their current market cap. They have $1 billion still left in that repurchase plan. And then on their balance sheet, $2.4 billion in cash and short-term investments, total debt of $992 million at the end of 2023. Yes, yeah, solid across the board here. With the exception of those profit margins you mentioned, Casey. So that's where we should maybe turn to the guidance here. For Q1 2024, they're expecting about a 3% year-over-year increase in revenue. So again, not out of the woods yet. We are still dealing with a cyclical decline in network hardware and security hardware. But for the full year, revenue expected to be up at least 8%. So this implies that just as management told us, in Q3, they do expect to return to double-digit percentage revenue growth as we exit 2024. So what does this say? What's happening exactly? Well, as you said, Casey, they're making that pivot to the SASE product. But SASE, you know, when it comes down to like actual financials, it shows up as service revenues, recurring software as a service revenues. But there is actual hardware that needs to be built, infrastructure that needs to be installed. And that takes CapEx, capital expenditures. And when you're building a new CapEx intense service, you're going to have to build it. And then you're going to have to market it. So that explains while they do expect revenue to continue to grow this year and accelerate as the year continues, profit margins are going to decline for a bit as they ramp up that new product, the SASE product, as well as some new software services that sort of complement that. You're going to find a lot more about the cybersecurity industry than you ever thought possible with our upcoming cybersecurity industry manual. Nick will explain things like SASE. That is coming soon. That will be on our Ko-fi page in our shop. Or if you want to join a membership here on YouTube or over on our Ko-fi membership section, you can get that manual included into your membership, which also includes access to our Discord channel where we share lots of new ideas in all of our show notes. Also, we know that 50% of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you could, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. Nick, tell us a little bit more about Fortinet's competition in this area, SASE. Yeah, so maybe backing up just a moment, because we originally postulated that we thought Fortinet's best in breed cybersecurity hardware, again, powered by those proprietary SPUs, would lend itself very well to this SASE service. We wrote an article about this last October, a link here and also in the show notes to that article that helps explain big dip and free cash flow. Part of this deal is Fortinet signed an agreement with Google Cloud to expand their points of presence in data centers around the world to help build out the SASE service. That's just a data center deal. They still have to spend the money to fill up those data centers with the networking equipment itself. That's why we think free cash flow and profit margins overall will be in a brief lull in 2024. At any rate, because of Fortinet's leading hardware business. We think that this is still a divide and conquer situation between Fortinet and other companies like you already mentioned Palo Alto Networks, Casey, the leader in SASE, as well as companies like Arista Networks. This is a divide and conquer situation for legacy IT hardware looking at you, Cisco. But, you know, (laughs) maybe you like max profit margins and dividends, so maybe Cisco's your ticket. But The point is here, Fortinet's growth story is far from finished. This is just a growth cyclical business. This has happened many times in the past since Fortinet made its publicly traded debut during the big financial crisis of 08, 09. They've done very well since then, but cyclicality is a normal part of this company's business model. 
CFO Keith Jensen made a comment about the security hardware that Fortinet provides to its customers. He made a comparison by saying that they had a multi-vendor bake-off, which they were successful by demonstrating the versatility of their operating system and Fortinet's platform. I think that was just a cute comment, but it ultimately really underscores the fact that vendor consolidation is happening in the cybersecurity industry. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Keith Jensen, a fan of the great British Bake Off, like you, Casey. I think so. Okay, so vendor consolidation. This is a frequent comment for years now from all the top cybersecurity peer play companies, Fortinet, Palo Alto Networks. You can see this show up in CrowdStrike with their strategy of adding new security modules to their platform as well. And what this is talking about is this trend towards organizations doing more security with fewer providers, with fewer cybersecurity vendors. This trend is still very much in force. And Fortinet has this fully fleshed out security suite, adding new services to it all the time. And when you have a big organization in particular that has this very complex, sprawling, global IT infrastructure that you need to keep secure, if it's possible to get the job done, the cybersecurity work finished with just one or two vendors, you're going to take the opportunity to do that and consolidate. It helps simplify things. It helps with controlling your operating expenses. And you also get a better overall experience as well. As Keith Jensen mentioned later on in the comments here, you have some other things that maybe your non-cybersecurity professional doesn't think about. But when you have a single operating platform for multiple functions, you're maybe able to share data across those different services more easily and get a more clear picture of where you might have holes in your cybersecurity strategy. And to think of this on a extremely simple level, you have a shopping list of items that you need to get. You need maybe some nails for a home project. You have groceries you need to get. You have to get your kids equipment for practice. I don't know. You can name a ton of things that you need for your shopping list. You can go to multiple stores to get each of those items, or you can go to Walmart and get it all. Very appropriate comparison. Yeah, absolutely. Are you going to get the highest quality of each of those items at Walmart? Probably not. Maybe, maybe a couple of them, you can get the highest quality thing at Walmart. But generally speaking, you're like getting plenty good enough stuff at Walmart. Is that what's happening at Fortinet? Like you're getting plenty good? They're the leader or close to leadership position in a lot of things, but in a lot of others, you know, not exactly cutting edge technology, but it gets the job done. That's good enough. This reminds me of Ron Swanson. Maybe just continue your illustration. He buys all of his food at Food and Stuff and most of his stuff. It's yeah. Fortinet, Palo Alto Networks, all the big players are like your Food and Stuff, your Walmart of cybersecurity. We're probably taking this too far. All right. Maybe some of these companies would not like to be compared to Walmart. No, they certainly wouldn't like it. And it's probably not fair to compare them to that either. But at any rate, let's move on. We're going to get ourselves in trouble. Let's move on to valuation. So Fortinet indicated the bottom for the hardware cycle could be finished sometime in the first half of this year. This, of course, adds fuel to the argument that growth will accelerate in the second half of 2024, putting Fortinet back into that double digit percentage growth mode again. So tell us the numbers for valuation currently. Okay. So as of this recording, Fortinet 51 times trailing 12 month earnings per share based on the 20, 2023 numbers they just provided, 45x on an adjusted earnings per share basis. 33 times trailing 12 month free cash flow. So again, Casey, the billings guidance for the first quarter indicates the cyclical downturn isn't finished. And we also don't know just how fast Fortinet will be growing as we exit 2024 in 10 months from now. So this, the stock still is quite expensive. This is a premium valuation, especially on a gap earnings per share basis. Embedded in that valuation, though, is 
lots of depreciation and amortization on past investments. Remember, Fortinet tends to grow organically. They dump a lot of their cash into organic R&D uh, on technology versus like your Palo Alto networks that acquired its way back into a leadership position when CEO Nikesh Aurora took over almost six years ago now. That's one of the reasons for the high valuation. It's not just simply the market betting on massive growth for years and years to come. Although we do think maybe some high single digit to low teens percentage revenue growth is embedded in this valuation, but a lot of it is just simply depreciation and amortization expense. And you do see the lower free cash flow valuation as the company has only just begun to ratchet back up its investments into it, it, its own network security infrastructure in support of that SASE service. So we think the valuation possibly set to get worse this year as the company makes some new organic investments. So all that said, we still see Fortinet as a top cybersecurity pure play stock. And we don't really see any reason that Fortinet's going to lose that leadership position anytime soon. It has a strong balance sheet. It gives it tons of options going forward. And they've been repurchasing plenty of stock. They plan to continue that stock repurchasing. So we're still happy to keep this stock in our portfolio for the long term. Yeah, absolutely. We're not adding. We already have owned this for six years, going on six years now. And so the reason why we're not adding personally, while why we're not adding is it's a full position in our portfolio. But in addition to that, we do see some possible volatile price action really just continuing from what has been the norm the last few years. Part of it is just the market may be trying to sort out what Fortinet's ultimate growth trajectory will be. And then also the valuation on a trailing 12 month free cash flow basis, we do think is above the historical average, maybe not at the top of the historical ad average, but above it. So that should translate into some volatile price action, we think, going forward. All right, that's a wrap on Fortinet. We still have many more earnings coming your way, Albemarle and Air Products that we'll do in a video this week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you have not already. And if you want access to our show notes, you can check out our Kofi shop page or you can join our membership over on Kofi or here on YouTube. That'll get you access to those show notes as well as our Discord channel. Lots of great discussion on that channel. And we know that you will enjoy it very much and we'll see a lot of value for the membership. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. We'll see you again very soon at Chipstock Investor.